I have a message for my fellow Africans or the black African race all over the world, whether black America, whether Caribbean, whether in Africa. So this one, let me check the date. May 16, 2018, I think. Why the self-hate? There is, there is so much self-hate within the black race. We have to first acknowledge it and we have to get rid of it. You know, if you take psychology 101 in college, it tells you, you have solved 50% of your problem if you first of all acknowledge there is one. Many Africans, many blacks in the black race, we don't even want to acknowledge we have a problem. And we do. I will start with Africa because that's, I'm familiar. That's my area of expertise. Number one, Africans. And this is prevalent all over Africa. We, some, I know this personally and I know so many people who experience this. So this is not ESC, second. I know for sure, 100%. And I know people personally. In my own family, I know it's, it's all over Africa. Number one. Why do those who are a little bit more privileged or have wealth or a little bit of education and influence and affluence, we go to the villages of Africa, take the poor, impoverished little children, maybe 10, 12, 8, anywhere from the age of 8 years old, bring and promise their parents that we're going to bring them to the city to educate them. And what do you do when you bring those kids from the villages? They become maid and servants to your own children. Eight years old, ten years old child, children, boy or girl. They become slaves. They, these are Africans treating Africans the same way. But where they quick, they first want to be quick and say Donald Trump is racist and the white man and KKK. If we expect Donald Trump and his likes to show us any kind of respect and dignity, we must first begin to show that to ourselves and to our brethren. If you believe Donald Trump and the white man is racist and they're not treating you with respect and dignity, they are merely reflecting back to you the self-hate you have within your own soul towards yourself and towards your fellow Africans. Now, let me get back to my story. We bring these young men and young women from the villages with a promise to their poor parents and say we're going to send them to school and educate them. And those kids come, eight, they wake up five, six in the morning, go to the place, draw for those who don't have running water, they have to go to a walk how many miles to go get water, fresh water on their head, to bring water to make sure you and your kids have your shower. Then they have to make sure you are, you have eaten your breakfast. Then once your kids are gone off to school, driven to school in the car by your chauffeur, then that innocent child that came from the, like you brought from the village, after they have taken, they have cooked, provide breakfast for you, your kids, clean up the house, do the laundry. And most of those, most of those chores and housework is done manually. There's no washing machine or dishwasher, so it's done with the hands. After all the chores, the morning chores is done, then I child have to take shower, walk to the bus stop and go to school. While that kid is sitting in school, he or she is sleeping because they are tired. These are kids from the age of 8 years old and up. It's not, it's not even adults. These, they are treating kids like this forever. This is common. We have to stop this. We have to stop. Am I saying there's anything wrong with having maid or nanny? No. But don't treat the maid and nanny as if they are slaves, and especially if they are children. Treat them with the same respect and the same dignity you treat your own children. And the same food your kids will eat, let them eat it. Sometimes they, their kids will eat the best of food and just the crust. You know, you cook rice in Africa in the pot. The, 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 the burnt one that's left in the pot, we call the crust, the rice crust, with some oil. That's what those innocent kids eat because they are maids. You turn them into maid. These are Africans treating other Africans like this. And then when people show up and people like Donald Trump and his life, they make a, a statement that you are offended by. You want to lash out. You have no right to lash out. Look at, look at your own heart. That's number one. Number two, I know family members, mothers who, who have such a favoritism amongst their children. That a certain group of the kids, they will love them and put them on a the pedestal. The other siblings will be like slaves to their own brothers and sisters. This happened in household. I know mothers. Personally, I know people. Who have mother who have two children, take the one the one child, put it to the bosom as if that's the end or and be or the other child they just abandon them. But where the same one who are so easily offended and angry that oh, Donald Trump supposedly allegedly made a statement that you offended by. Why are you offended by it? Why are you offended by it, beloved? 
You have no right to say, to accuse Donald Trump or anybody else out there that they are racist and the way they treat you or talk to you. You have no right to say that, you know what? Because check your own heart first. Before you point one finger at somebody and accuse them of anything, four is pointing back at you. So that means you are four times as worse or four times as guilty for the very same crime you are accusing somebody else of, isn't it? If you are honest and brutally honest and sincere with yourself, this hatred is even within our own bloodline. That mothers amongst their children will take one or two and put them as their bosom. The other two, the other kids, they become slaves or nanny or they just threw them out of the house and they have no regards. They don't even look, check back to say that child alive. No, but they have the same, the other kid, the other brother or sister in the house and they love them, put them on the pedestal, literally worship them, they will die for that one child. But the other child is out in the street. They don't even care. But you are the same one who you, you are offended because what somebody said something or did he say something or allegedly say something. You have no right to be angry. When you get, you check your own heart. Look how you raise your own children. Look how we treat our own Africans, brothers and sisters that you take them from the village and you promise their parents to send them to school and you bring them, you treat them like slaves. And when those poor kids come from school after they don't slept in school, they come from school, what do they have to do? They don't have time for homework. They have to first make sure your kids' homeworks are done. They have to make sure your kids have eaten. They have to make sure the house is clean. Your kids' uniform are clean and nicely ironed, ready for the next day. If they have any energy left, then they have to go and do their own homework. This is how Africans treat each other. This is how Africa, this happened in the, uh, Liberia, Nigeria, Ghana. This happens. We have to stop this. We have to. I don't have any issue with having nanny, but first, if we're going to have nanny, let them be of age. Number one, number two, don't treat them like slaves. Treat them as part of the family with dignity and respect because they are human beings. That's somebody's mother, somebody's child. Hello. Isn't this the same reason what caused some of the civil war that happened in Liberia? I know, granted, the West are behind most of the civil war in Liberia, but they use that kind of self hate to cause us to fight against each other. What well, in Liberia they call it the American Liberian against the the indigenous Liberia. They have a term they call it the countryman because you're from the village. And the American Liberians are known they have that name because those are the 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 free slaves that left America. Remember when slavery was no longer needed, or when slavery was abolished in America, President James Monroe asked some of the Africans or the black Americans in America, who wants to go back to Africa? Some of the free slaves in America decided they wanted to go. My great-grandmother was one of those people who left America as a teenager, maybe 12, 13, 14, somewhere, to go back to Liberia to start, to start their life all over. Yes. And from that day on, as when the slaves, when the free slaves landed in Liberia, just how the white master treated them in America is the same treatment they gave to the natives, to the indigenous Africans they met there after they returned back from slavery in America. And that continues to this very day. That's how come many of you see civil war happening like it was because they, they called it the countrymen against the civilized men. Are we all not Liberians? Are we all not Africans? When are we going to put aside these differences and stop killing each other? And sometimes we do it with our own words. Well, that's a countryman. Some Liberians, even till today, they won't marry. I don't marry countrymen. I don't marry outside of this. You are an African. You are a Liberian. You are African, period. You are black. We have this separation and hatred and division. It has to stop. It's killing Africa. Can somebody wake up and say, listen, we are all Africans. Um, we are all Liberians. We are all one. Let's stop this. Please, beloved. So I beg of you. Everybody, search your own heart. If you have ever ill-treated any child, whether your own child or somebody else's child, then you have no right to demand respect and dignity and honor from Donald Trump or his likes until you make your heart right. And if we Africans, the black race all over the world, if we are demanding and expecting to be respected and honored and dignified by anybody, it must start within our own race. We must start to love, respect, and pay some dignity and honor to each other. Then the world will marry the love we have towards each other. But because we have this deep-rooted self-hate, the world, the way they treat us, they are merely mirroring back to us what we have in our own heart. I hope we can wake up. It's a cry. It's a cry and a plea to all of us Africans. Let's bear our heart. Let's have some reconciliation within our own heart, our own family, and begin to reconcile. 
Her mother treat one child over the other. A favoritism over one uh, child over the other. How the Africans take the kids from the villages and treat them like slaves. And some of those same kids become president tomorrow in Liberia, in Africa. Guess what happened? In their mind, it's payback time. We wonder when this vicious killing and attack of Africans upon Africans will ever stop. In their mind, this is payback time. You treated me as a houseboy. You treated me as a, a slave. Now I'm in power. Guess what? I'm going to pay back your children. So those of you who ill treat other people's children or ill treat your own children and play favoritism amongst your own children, what you don't realize, one day those children will grow up. The ones you are ill treating, you don't realize. You don't have a future to, or foresight to see in the, into the future. That those very kids you are ill treating, whether it be your own child or somebody else's child you took from the village, what you don't realize, those kids will grow to become adults. And they will live in the same world that your kids are living in. Is it a peaceful world you're leaving behind? Think about it. You have loved your kids. You put them on a the pedestal. They go to the best of school, the best of everything. And then somebody else's child, you treat them like a slave. Or maybe your own child, you cause separation and, and favoritism amongst your own sibling. Maybe because someone their light skin or the mulatto or whatever the foolishness is. You put one on a pedestal and the other ones, you treat them like slaves. But you don't seem to realize all those kids will grow up. And they will have to share the same world together. What kind of world are you leaving behind? Do you have a vision to, to a foresight to see what's coming to the future? You think the world will be so pretty and beautiful because your kids are the best and you have given them the best and sent them to the best of school. So you think your kids, because they went to the best of school, you think they will rule the world? Are you God? Have you any idea? Have we not lived long enough to realize? Some of the very people you ill treat and disregard and disrespect and push down sometimes the very same people that God raised up have we not lived long enough to see that? That people you look down your nose upon today can be the same person placed into a position of authority to save your life? Have we not lived long enough to realize that? That when God who changes times and season can take that same child or children that you have ill treated and abused, whether physically, whether verbally, whether emotionally, whether mentally, that that same person may be the one who holds your very destiny in their hands when they grow up. You don't know that? Have we not lived long enough to see? We have the, 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 the nursery rhyme called Cinderella. We all watch it, we listen to it, we read these books growing up. Don't, don't we see it play out right before our very eyes? So I want, I make a plea to all parents and every mother. Begin to treat every child as if you give birth to them because you don't know the future of every child. You don't know the future of any child. So treat them the way you treat your own child with love, with dignity, with respect. Put them on a pedestal, love them. Don't ill treat them. And sometimes even in the homes, those little girls that they will bring from the village that are age 8, 9, 10, bring them in the house. And the woman who's brought them in the house, if she's married, and that child begins of age, the teenager, 13, 14, the husband will be sneaking into that child's room and molesting or having sex with her. Yes. We, but we don't want to talk about this. Africans say, oh, don't, don't, don't air the dirty laundry because people in the West will not respect us. You think that's, what, that's how you solve a problem? Don't you know silent Silence of any problem is even worse than the perpetrator who's com who committing the crime. Don't you know that? That you know right and you know truth and you keep silent. That's even more dangerous. Don't you know that? We have to address this issue. We've got to talk about it. That is little girls. When they hit the age of 12, 13, 14, it's grown men sneaking up in the room while his wife and kids sleeping, sneaking up in the house and go molest them. Sleep with them. They get pregnant and, and guess what? They will kick that child out and send her back to the village. Some of them will know, some of the women, women knows full well the husband sleeping with that little house girl. They know that. We have to stop this Africa. If we want to have a better Africa, if we want to make Africa great, check out my website. It's www.makeafricagreat.org. O -R -G. We have to make Africa great. But in order for us to make Africa great, we have to get to the root cause of many of Africa's problems. It starts with self-hate. It starts with self-hate. Before we can expect the West to respect us, let's begin to respect ourselves. Before we can expect the West of anybody else to respect us and love us, we have to begin to do that within our own race, our own culture, and love each other. Help us to make Africa great. Let us be a holistic approach, not just to educate people. It's one thing to educate somebody, but you educate somebody who's, still, who's dealing with hatred and bitterness. All you are doing is you are equipping him that when he gains the power, he will destroy whatever he put his hand on. Isn't that what's happening in Africa? 
we have those politicians into the position of authority, but deep in their in their heart, there's still hatred, lack of love. Hello, there's still hate, um, hatred and lack of love towards himself and towards fellow Africans. That's why a man can get into office and stay there until he's 90 years old, and then while he's in office, he take the money of the country. All the persons in Africa and bring it to the West or go to Dubai, buy buildings and properties and private jets and send the kids to the best of school and medical care and medical checkup. They come to the West. Do you think somebody who loves himself and loves his people will do that? Hello? Do you think a man, you put a man in power in the office in any nation and he loves himself and he loves his fellow Africans? Do you think he will do that? Do you think he will do that? Of course not. So it's not only good enough for us to make Africa great only through education, but also begin to check our mind and check our heart. Many of our tradition, our culture is what's killing us. Oh, you know, you keep crying. Oh, you know, you're not supposed to talk to the elders. And you're not supposed to question your elders. Who said that? It's time for us to question some of our elders. It's time for us to conf confront them. It's time for them also to ask some questions to our mothers, our uh, fathers, brothers, sisters, aunties, uncles, grandparents. It's time for us to sit down and ask them some questions. If you have some questions in your mind, ask them before they die. Otherwise, that question will plague you for the rest of your life. Ask them. It's time for us to have a conversation with each other. Let's talk. Because somebody, just because somebody is old and elder doesn't mean they are right, nor do they know it all the time. No man knows everything all the time. And everybody can learn from everybody. You can learn from a two-year-old. You can learn from a 50-year-old. Africa, let's humble ourselves. Please, before our God and before each other. And let's ask the Lord to check our heart. That the hatred and the bitterness, the selfishness, the pride and the arrogance that is within our own heart and is expressed in how we govern Africa. Lord, help us and deliver us from self-hatred before it destroys us once more. Thank you. Share this video. God bless you.